different kind of show today. Our trail is in the sky. We're going to be riding a B-17 World War II Flying Fortress. This one is called Ye Old Pub. Quite a story behind Ye Old Pub. And we're going to tell you that story as we go along. But get ready for a lot of fun. We're going to ride a B-17 today. Community Insider is brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Good for life, good for the community. Community TV TN is brought to you by Security Federal Savings Bank. Proudly serving the community we call home. High quality leads with prolific internet marketing and invigorating web design services that will energize your business. We are Sirius SEM. Call today or visit us at SiriusSEM.com. Welcome to another edition of Community Insight. Join us as we travel Middle Tennessee, uncovering history and experiencing the adventure of unique stories and events coming to you inside your community. My name is John Hess. I'm a volunteer for the Liberty Foundation, and we help tour this B-17. It's in, painted in the markings of Ye Old Pub to help honor our veterans and educate people about World War II. Just wanted to let you know we're giving B-17 flights this weekend. Rides are 475 per person. We also have P-51 flights available. And uh, their website is www.libertyfoundation.org. Our phone number is 678-589-7433. In just a moment, we'll hear from 96-year-old Edwin Bell, a veteran of 35 flights aboard B-17s and B-29s in World War II. Just uh, uh, hit our button on the Bombay doors in the airplane up here, opened up, uh, all we had to do two switches all we did, and that would salve over whatever the thing was set up to do. I did that. We went to Romania, Poesti, Bucharest, all in Romania. We went there in the oil fields mostly. They were trying to get, keep the oil and the petroleum from Hitler, and they did a good job of it, I think. But we'd go one day, two days later, we'd go back and they'd be pumping oil again, and we'd bomb them again, hit the same places. We couldn't remember, they were flying from different angles. And uh, we, uh, we just did Southern Europe. We went to France a few times, Northern Italy. We didn't go to Switzerland. Boy, don't get across the Swiss border, you're in bad trouble. You know, the Germans wouldn't even shoot at you, but the Swiss would. We didn't hear much about that. And the old fella come out to talk to me on the great part of the be on the I couldn't speak Italian. But he gave me some grapes to eat. Almost didn't eat them. At two o'clock in the morning, you don't have to argue much. But he he wanted to be sure that the, nobody got in his grapes at night. Of think the war was still going on. Like I said before, the Italians, they were glad to see us in a way. Uh, I told the rest of them earlier on that we had Italian KPs, and they didn't even have guards watching. They didn't want to leave. <laughs> they, were, they were glad to in 45. And from B-17s in Europe, they took B-17s to middle Kansas, and then they give them B-29s. And 
and in the process I was ended up in the same outfit in Kansas I was in Italy. I was, well, kind of glad to be in the old outfit again. But I didn't stay there long. They phased out to be 29. And then I got into the ground safety business. And I stayed in that. And uh, I re-enlisted out here to the air base at Smyrna three times in the ground safety office. And in the late 50s, I went to a guided missile school. And then I went to Germany as a guided missile wing, you know, this year. And uh, from there, I went to Washington State in the Air Defense Command headquarters at Tacoma, at a Tacoma McCord Air Base. It's on Fort Lewis. The incident happened on December 20th, 1943, when after a successful bomb run on Bremen, Charles Charlie Brown's B-17 Flying Fortress named Yo Pub was severely damaged by German fighters. Luftwaffe ace Franz Stigler had the chance to shoot down the crippled bomber, but for humane reasons decided to allow the crew to fly back to England. As the old pub approached Bremen, Germany, German anti-aircraft batteries opened up on the formation. Unfortunately for the pilots and crew of the old pub, one of the anti-aircraft rounds exploded right in front of their plane, destroying the number two engine, damaging number four. Missing one engine and with another throttle back due to damage, the old pub could no longer keep up with the formation. Brown's trickling B-17 was now attacked by over a dozen enemy fighters. Further damage was sustained, including damage to the number three engine. The gunner's weapons then jammed, and most of the crew were wounded. The tail gunner had been killed. Brown's damage bomber was spotted by Germans on the ground, including Franz Stickler, who was refueling and rearming at an airfield. He soon took off in his Messerschmitt and quickly caught up with Brown's plane. Through the damaged bomber's airframe, Stickler was able to see the injured and incapacitated crew. To the American pilot's surprise, Stickler did not open fire on the crippled bomber. Stickler recalled the words of one of his commanding officers, if I ever see or hear of you shooting at a man in a parachute, I will shoot you myself. Stickler later commented, to me, it was just like they were in a parachute. I saw them and I couldn't shoot them down. Why Stigler tried to get Brown to land his plate at a German airfield and surrender or divert to a nearby neutral Sweden. Brown and his crew of the B-17 didn't understand what Stigler was trying to mouth and gestured to them, so flew on. Stigler then flew near Brown's plane in a formation on the bomber's port wing side, so German anti-aircraft units would not target it. He then escorted the damaged B-17 over the coast until they reached open water. The bomber made it back to England. Stickler was never able to speak of his actions that day, as it would have meant certain court-martial. After the war, Brown returned home to West Virginia. Stickler moved to Canada. Between 1990 and 2008, Charlie Brown and Franz Stickler became close friends and remained so until their deaths in 2008.